noise. I still can't hear you. Let's make some noise. Come on. We are 60 hours away. 60 hours. the wonderful natural resources that we have. This is a beautiful, beautiful state. And the eyes of America are on Michigan. Everybody's looking at you. Knowing that this can be the comeback state, that this is where industry can be revved up again once government gets off your back and is put back on your side. We get to the starting line on Tuesday when you vote Donald Trump as our next president. There are so many good things in store for Michigan, for the rest of the United States, when we stop this fundamental transformation of America that's been done to us. Remember President Obama as a candidate, he promised he'd do it. And the only campaign promise he kept. We don't need, though, that fundamental transformation of America. We need now a fundamental restoration of all that is good and strong and safe and secure about America. We do that with a candidate who understands what built America. You know what it was? It was reward for hard work, right? That expectation for reward, for work ethic. And it was responsible development of our natural resources. And we have a choice in this election. Now, I'm not here to indict Hillary Clinton. She'll do that herself. differences in the candidates. Here we have Hillary who had said she's going to put our coal miners out of work. That tells you she has no idea about the inherent link between energy development and security and energy and prosperity. She has no idea what that means to take those steps to be less reliant, not at all reliant, on foreign countries to energize us. We have the resources here. They're essentially warehoused underground. It's time to, remember you guys, drill, baby, drill. You guys remember that chant, you know, from like eight years ago? That was, that was always a big thing, drill, baby, drill. You know what occurred to me the other day, though? The only time you hear drill, baby, drill in their lexicon is if you look at Anthony Weiner's tweets. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, going rogue with a joke, right? I love Michigan. This is where we started going rogue, isn't it? This is in the vice presidential race back in 08 as McCain was kind of wrapping up some areas and the vice presidential team, we were told we were supposed to go to Michigan and campaign. And then we were told like that morning, ah, forget Michigan. 
Uh, they're, they're never going to vote red. We're, we're, we're out of here. And we're like, what? Every vote matters. Every vote matters. We want to go to Michigan. We were this close to renting a car, I kid you not. A couple of the guys who are here with me, they, they can testify to this. One of them was there. And he got threatened to be arrested for doing this with the campaign, taking us to Michigan anyway. They said we were just going too rogue then. But we were saying to the campaign back then, they weren't quite understanding what it is that this part of the country represents. You guys are this microcosm of America, this wonderful, beautiful melting pot. And it doesn't matter, especially in this day and age, really what party affiliation, it, it, you guys are just fed up with Americans. You are fed up and you are ready for that positive change that only Trump and Pence can bring forth. You're ready to put that Michigan work ethic back to work. And that too is a, a big reason that a lot of the eyes of the country are on Michigan. Also, because you know those polls, whew, as they started showing the tightening and tightening, and people were like, what, Michigan? They're, they're, they may be voting for Trump, and I don't like looking at the polls usually, like I've said, you know, polls are only good for strippers and cross-country skiers, but, but it's been encouraging to see the polls to show the momentum is here in Michigan for Trump, and that's what we need in the waning days, is that momentum. And we need that wave to grow, to spread across even more of the United States. So much depends on you guys getting the vote out and, you know, convincing people, even in your circle of influence, maybe they're not big fans of Trump's tone. I don't care. his <laughs> tone. Yeah, no, right. Not, remind them, okay, then don't vote for the man if you just can't. Vote for the planks and the platform. What is represented with Hillary's camp and with Trump's camp? The choices couldn't be more clear. You know, we, we have a candidate who understands the private sector. They have a candidate who says, quote, don't let anybody tell you that corporations and businesses create jobs. How out of touch, you know? And then she plays the girl card and kind of like, oh, vote for me just because I'm a gal. And I say, you know, I wish first woman president at least would be in touch with the people connected. I'd like to see her at least be able to drive her own car in these recent decades. She said she hadn't driven them since 96. Heck, I want the first woman president to drive a truck. Built in Michigan. That's why we need your manufacturing to be revved back up. Government can do it by letting you do what you do best. And government politicians trusting you. Again, trusting the American people to make decisions for your own lives and your own businesses instead of some far off faceless bureaucrat or politician thinking that they know how to spend your money better. They know how to teach your kids morals and values better than you do. That they know how to lay out the future for you and your family better than you do. No, it's time that we have someone who has such a heart for the people of America, for the people of America, that he trusts you and wants you empowered. Trump talks all the time about he is proud of his success. He says, yeah, I'm blessed. I am, I've been successful. And I want you to be successful too. He wants that for all of us. What did you say? <laughs> you guys are wild cats around here. And it's good to see. Trump's a liberal! If Trump were a liberal, would I be standing here? Thank God Trump has been independent enough to understand that obsessive partisanship when it comes to like the hierarchy of a political machine.
machine, they're not necessarily looking out for you. And we found that out, didn't we? In the GOP even. And the GOP better be careful or they're going to go the way of the wigs. If they don't start understanding that people are tired of the political games. They are so sick and tired of the corruption. We have no time for this. There, there's no time. Hey, like I said, back in Iowa, when I first endorsed Trump, this was back in January, I said, there's no time for pussy footing around. I was before my time, I guess, when I said that, but we have no time. There is so much to be done to start. Oh, I'm impressed. I am. I feel like I'm at home. Smelling a combustion engine. I love Michigan. I love Michigan. And I thank you all for my son, his senior year of high school, he got to move to Michigan and to play AAA hockey, and you guys took such good care of him. And then, and then he joined the Army, and as a combat vet, he was able to help take care of you. It was reciprocated, and I thank you guys for being such a great state and having that connection, I'm proud of. Hey, another connection too. I, I'm glad I'm not here November 15th because you guys would all be gone, wouldn't you? <laughs> and I'd be following you too with a bow, you know. I got my mission compound bow and I'd be out there hunting with you. But uh, the connection again that all Americans have, just wanting the best for our kids for our future. Look, enough people finally said enough. When people realized what government corruption does to our lives, government corruption, how it affects our lives, enough people saw that and enough people said enough. The status quo has got to go. So why would we elect someone to fix corruption who is a corrupter? What are they thinking? So people realizing how bad the corruption is and we'll